Kumusta mga kaisla? Drini here. And today I'm gonna show you how to build a mini ITX computer. So these components have been sent to me. This will be used for work and gaming. And we're gonna run it on Windows 10 and Mac OS. This would be a Hackintosh and Windows 10 build. So I'm gonna use these components to show you the step-by-step -step in building one. So let's do this. This is a B450i that is not 3000 series or Ryzen 3rd gen ready. And the CPU that we will be using today is a Ryzen 5 3600X. I need to upgrade its BIOS that can support 3rd gen CPUs. Okay, so we've successfully updated the BIOS. So this is the arrow of the motherboard, the round white circle there. We need to match it to the arrow on our CPU because you might damage the pin and it would cause boot errors later on when you do a test boot. If everything's aligned, it would fit perfectly even if you nudge it, it wouldn't move. Let's apply the thermal paste. The Ryzen CPUs are larger compared to an Intel CPU. The way I do it is I apply a pea size on the center, then small pea size on each corner. So I would have full contact on the heat spreader of our CPU. We're gonna use the stock cooler, which is a Wraith Spire cooler. The heatsink has a pre-applied thermal paste, so let us remove it with an alcohol and paper towel. Once everything is cleaned off, we could now place our CPU cooler on top of our CPU. What I like to do is I screw it on a diagonal pattern to evenly distribute the pressure on our CPU cooler. Once everything's good, tighten up. Let's grab our RAM sticks. So this is our HyperX Fury. So we're gonna place it here. As you can see, there's a notch on our RAM and on our motherboard. So we need to match it together so we could clip it in. So the, this is the notch on our motherboard and this is where it should be aligned to our RAM sticks. So let's put it in. So let's secure it. This is a dual RAM channel. So we need two RAM sticks to fill everything up. So let's just attach the CPU fan to our motherboard. Then, same as the RAM sticks, our GPU has a notch here that would match perfectly on our motherboard. So let's snap it in. Okay, it's good. Now that everything is connected, we need the power cables. So this is the CPU 8-pin. Most of the time, the 8-pin CPU cables are on the upper left corner of our motherboards. Okay. Then, let's grab the 24-pin and connect it to our motherboard. Now let's grab the PCIe 8-pins for our graphics card. Then, we could now do a test boot. I do a test boot before placing everything in our case so it would be much easier for us if something goes wrong. So my test boot was a success and now I could place the components in our SG13. Okay, so we need to remove the screws at the back of the SG13. Then we could pull the case apart using this handle. There is something that bothers me with this case because I thought this was brand new but apparently some of the screws are not matching and there's a lot of dust inside of it. Anyway, let's remove the front panel so we could easily maneuver the components when we are installing it inside our case. So I'm gonna install the power supply. So as you can see, that SG13 could accommodate an ATX power supply. 
So we need a bracket so we could use our SFX power supply. And I decided to face the fan intake of our power supply on top of our case rather than facing the CPU cooler. So let us place our motherboard plate. This is included in our motherboard. So just snap it in. Then we're good. If you're planning to use SG13 as well, I suggest that you remove the power supply so you could easily install your motherboard rather than the power supply is blocking the motherboard. But it all depends on how you want to install it. Here you could see the clearance of the CPU cooler versus our power supply. So if you decide to use an ATX power supply, just make sure to measure it. I'm gonna use a 120mm fan as our intake. You can accommodate a 140mm but it would hit or it might be too tight on the GPU side and you can place the SSD bracket on top of it. I have decided to use a Y splitter cable so that I could sync the Noctua fan to our CPU cooler. This would help lower the temperature inside of our case by pulling cool air outside when the temperature inside of our case increases. Let's place back our power cables again. Our 8 pin, then our 24 pin. In preparation for our graphics card installation. So let's remove the back plate. But before installing our graphics card, I would highly suggest that you install the front panel headers and our front panel audio because if you're using the same motherboard as I am, the manufacturer placed it here near the graphics card. So it really depends on what board you are using and please refer to the manual since every manufacturer changes it. Then let us connect our front panel USB. This would activate the front USB ports. And now that we're done installing our 120mm fan and our front panel connections, we could now place the screws back in in preparation for our GPU and cable management. So same as earlier, we need to just align the graphics card to our motherboard PCIe slot, snap it back in, then secure it with the graphics card plate at the back of our case. And now for the most tedious part of PC building, the cable management. And since this is a mini ITX computer, managing the cables properly would maximize our airflow. So prepare tons of cable management ties or zip ties. Or if you have some spare cash lying around, you could purchase some custom length cables. So your cable management would be much cleaner and your case would have a much better airflow. And since this build will use two SATA SSD, we need to use the SSD bracket for our build. So here, since we're lacking the screws, I use double-sided tape to attach the SSD on our SSD bracket. Now we just need to connect the SATA cables and our power cables for our storage devices. These drives will run a Hackintosh Catalina and a Windows 10. So we can close this thing up, then put the screws back together. We're done building our mini ITX computer. I have my JXK, my Sun Milo TO3 beside me. On camera, they might look big, but actually they're not. I have a long band paper, and as you can see, I could hide the SG13, my JXK, and my Sun Milo, maybe a little bit. I have my switch as here as well. So here. There's height, for height, for height, and for width. So you can see that it really 
is a small computer. And building a mini ITX computer takes a small space on our desk. These are really small footprint cases. Building one is really not that difficult compared to a full tower case. It just really needs more time and planning since we want to maximize every space inside of our case. So hopefully you have learned something and thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe and like button. Stay safe and see you on the next one.